Good evening, everyone, and welcome. My name is G. Trulia, and tonight, you know, my partner in crime, Pete Meyer, he's looking a little different to me, isn't he? <laughs> sure is. A lot different. <laughs> no offense, Pete. And so here with us is... <laughs> I'm Brandon Steckler. I'm no Pete Meyer, obviously, <laughs> but uh, I am the technical editor of Motor Age magazine. I'm going to stand it in for Pete today because he couldn't be here because of the, the COVID and the weather and stuff like that. Yep, and he's really standing. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Literally standing in. And I'm Pierre Respo, the vice president of PSP, and I haven't been in on these for a while, but, uh, you know, I'm back with the mask. All good, and welcome. So today we have, we have for you improving your diagnostic efficiency. We'll be working on a BMW. As you know, Pierre has been, or maybe you don't know, but Pierre has been a BMW master tech for way too many years knows too much about BMWs, has chewed my ear off about BMW. But we're gonna show you some neat stuff. So here's what's gonna happen. We're gonna use the Opus Drive Pro ES product. You've seen me do this before. And I gotta tell you from being a shop owner, it is the tool you need in your shop. Not a sales pitch. You ever come up here to my shop, you'll see us use it. The three techs that are here, plus my apprentice could use it because he could press buttons quite easily. So overview, we're going to talk about the multi-brand platform. It covers all different vehicles. Tonight we're on BMW, okay, but it covers everything. Generic and enhanced scan tool functions, PIDs, bi-directional controls, and the most important thing, and I'm going to turn this over to Brandon in one second. And you know what the most important thing is? We all know so much, Brandon, right? But sometimes we get stuck. And when you get stuck, you need help. One of the things is this is just not a scan tool or a tablet that's going to help you. You have technicians behind master techs, experts in their field that you're going to see tonight that are going to help walk you through a problem. So this is an information system, a, a help center, and a tool, it has so much in it, and we're gonna show you three parts of the tool tonight. We're gonna show you one part of the scan tool that everyone should always start with, and it is the auto ingenuity part. Quite good on many car lines. And then we're gonna go back to, Pierre and I have used for many years, the old black box first and the old blue box, and that is the legacy software. And you know that from AutoLogic. Then we're going to show you how you get information and help, including the factory tool. We have Brandon Matthews that will be on with us, and he is going to walk you through ISTA. ISTA is the BMW factory tool. Now, like I said, Brandon, it's not only the tool itself, right? Yeah. Or you call me, I call you. It's more than that. It correct? sure is. And those of you guys that know me personally know I'm an Asian guy as far as manufacturers go. But you know what? I'm not scared of European vehicles. There's three basic things we need to be successful, especially with diagnostics, drivability, and things of that nature. We've got to have good service information. We've got to have proper tooling. We've got to be able to know how to use those tools as well. But you also have to be familiar with the car we're working on. If not, we can read about that and stuff. And that is definitely something I'd have. But you know what? When I get stuck, I'm lucky enough to have a bunch of friends I can turn to, but not everybody has that. That's so, correct. Being able to use the tool to get the information we need so we can use our head and make those diagnostic decisions is important. But having, having something like Opus IVS and the guy standing in the background, being able to give us that support when we need it most, I think that's phenomenal. That's right. And they have, you know, experts on there where, you know, how many times have you gone into your, uh, your information system and it's missing a piece? Yeah. You More may often need, than not. Right? And you may need something that's on the factory side. Yes, you can get that by going to nasteft.org and paying money. And by the time you do that, you would have had the information right from the Opus IVS people. They would have helped you out. So that makes a big difference. Yeah, especially being experts in their field on that end of the, you know, what you're working on. Exactly. It's nice to have somebody with experience. I'd agree. Have. And you learn from it, too. You bet. So what we're going to do is actually show you, Pierre, why don't you pick that tool up and kind of show them what the tool looks like. And then we will go to the screen here. And this is the tool, but tonight we're going to have this display displayed on the big screen so it's easier for you to see. And that should be... You can see everything that's on the screen, but we're not going to be actually necessarily uh, showing you the screen itself. So, uh, this allows you to select your make, 
obviously you could also do a generic OBD2. In this case, being on a BMW, now this is a 2015 BMW 328D, so it's a diesel sedan. Um, We're going to hit detect automatic VIN. And one thing we should be aware of, this car likes to go to sleep. That is something you always got to make sure that the key is on. If not, you won't get the tool communicated. And you may have some other trick that enables it to stay alive. In this case, leaving the parking lights on to uh, enable the vehicle not to go to sleep by itself. And you what else? Watch timeouts. What else did we do to prep this car? Oh, uh, yes. That's another thing that we should actually always try to say in every single webcast. You should always put a power supply, a stable, clean power supply on the vehicle before you start doing something where you're going to leave the ignition on for a long time. Uh, if you don't do that, you're going to, at the very least, uh, you know, kill the battery or whatever. But really what you might do is generate a whole bunch of voltage or network codes and you just create new trouble for yourself. That's right. Okay, so let's get into the DDME. Uh, so this is the button, the diesel electronics. Uh, you can read faults, which I don't have any of in this vehicle, at the, not, in the, not in the engine computer at least. Uh, we got transmission. You, well, you can do... Uh, Condition, so condition-based service is BMW servicing protocol. I'm not going to actually do that now, but you can uh, display or reset that. Um, in transmission, now there's actually two transmissions here. One is the transfer case and one is the automatic transmission. Uh, again, you can read faults. And let's stop there a second, Pierre. This being an X drive, right? Is yes, this an X drive? One of the things you always want to be careful on with BMW or any all-wheel drive vehicle is making sure that your tires, if you go to change them, are within three to four thirty seconds of an inch of each other. If you change one with a new tire or two with the new tire, you're going to have some problems. So be careful with that. Just a little tidbit there. Yeah. So, Pierre, what do we got here? Faults. It's your car. You got plenty of faults. Actually... Uh, this is a message fault, um, but it was not here when we were testing this car earlier. We made, I made the mistake of not plugging in the power supply earlier. <laughs> That'll so do it. I actually created that fault when we were setting the car up. That's actually not a problem with the car. But the no message fault means there was no communication uh, between EGS and uh, the, the body, basically. All right. You can also do special functions are the same in all of these. You can get live data, and I'm just going to pick one, but, you know, accelerator pedal position. You can take these and graph them out and look at your... Uh, yeah, pick a few of them and hit the grid, uh, the graph, rather. And that's great for action-reaction testing. You know yeah, what I mean? Exactly. You see something happen and, and... Graph is up top here. Got you covered. Right, it's I all done. It. So that's the graphing function. And very valuable, especially when you're looking for something that's, uh, you know, maybe a somewhat intermittent or a, only happens under a very specific circumstance type of uh, problem. Again, there's nobody in the car moving any of this. So these are just going to be straight lines at this point. But that's the kind of stuff you can do. You can also, um, you know, maximize the graph, show it as a, as a uh, you know, as a, as a bigger, as a, as a fuller screen. Um, so that's graphing. Uh, yeah, you could do a zoom in. Let me do a zoom in. So you can zoom in on a graph or zoom out and see how that line changes in the upper left-hand one. You can minimize the graphs. So it's pretty good. You can go to a list again, just back to the list of stuff, or you can go to a grid. How about actuators, Pierre? Well, they only allow you to reset the control unit, which I am not going to do. On oh, my own come vehicle. on. I, I, I thought we'd have some fun. On my own vehicle tonight. <laughs> okay, let's go back. This car home. All right. So um, there's module information, which you would normally only need if you were, uh, you know, changing your control unit or something like that. Uh, you know, you want to make sure you're on the right car. Though, if you work on race cars or things like that that people have played with, 
you may want to be checking your vins and all of that in case somebody played too too much brakes so you have uh dsc which is a you know dynamic stability control uh, oversized abs again you can read codes there are going to be codes here because this car has a problem with that um now this program shows the codes the numbers but it is not interpreting them uh, but you'd have to look that up we're going to get into that a little later in yeah the we're going to show you the different you know depending on the car line you're on auto ingenuity works real good on asian stuff domestic stuff works okay here but we're going to show you you have the legacy that we're going to go to in a bit that is really going to kick butt and then the factory stuff that is going to be which is the real help yeah right so safety is a crash module again we're not really going to play with that too much tonight but you, can but you don't want an airbag going off <laughs> i'd rather not <laughs> well you can't really actuate the airbags no. you know they don't allow you to do that though it would be kind of um, interesting as a prank but um no but you can look to see if you have for example the seatbelt switch that's not making a connection or uh, you know those kind of things or uh, in the case of the acoustic warnings when uh you know i have a dog and we, he sits on the seat if i haven't clipped the seatbelt buckle the thing drives me crazy um so you know airbag stage one and so forth you can you're only seeing if it's installed here you're not really um getting any data because there really isn't data on airbags in any car it's they don't work that way all right other is like everything else in the car so uh all around view can now there's a lot of things in cars that are optional not every mo car will have every module that could have been in it um because cars are options with different things but these are all the different parts of the car um and uh in fact i think there's still a code under scr Yep, so, still there, so there was a problem with a NOx sensor several months ago, which I negligently never cleared the code from <laughs> after I replaced the sensor. And that's the code there. Um, the, re the return pump taut in volume happened one time six months ago under really weird conditions, and it really was a problem with a, a low battery. It, it, was a, it was a voltage issue. So as a warning on any car. When you see codes, you have to do a complete diagnostic. Don't just say, oh, I have a code. Let's throw an engine at it. <laughs> <laughs> it can be quite expensive on your part. Yes. It's, it's, uh, it's more complicated than that. The point is it had a code that occurred one time six months ago under a specific uh, you know, slow crank start event. And, um, and so the, you know, I know that, and I've just been lazy and never cleared stuff. Um, so that's what's in this tool. Um, now let's get out of the tool there, Pierre. Let's back Actually, out of that. Did I, I didn't do a quick test, did I? Oh, do a quick test, yeah. Quick test is something that's brought over from BMW. Um, we joke about how they call it a quick test. And here's the place you really should start, by the way. Yeah. You should always go through, run a quick test. And this one was pretty quick because look at all this information. Now it went through all the modules. You know, look how long it took Pierre to go through each one. And obviously we're showing you, we're showing you, you know, going through each one of them, but you really don't need to do that if you run quick test. And uh, by the way, again, to reiterate, uh, more than half of these codes have to do with no message and things like that. And low battery. And low battery. And Very I caused those a couple of hours ago when we were setting this up. They yeah. weren't there before. And a lot of time, you know, one I want to touch on too in the, uh, the FEM the front engine one with the uh, um, the radio. There's always radio codes on these things. Yeah. Kind of normal. Don't go crazy trying to chase them. So let's back out of this, Pierre. Let's go home. They also always have flex ray. Uh... Okay, let's oh. go into legacy. So it's going to pop legacy. Oh, you got to kill that session. I didn't. It, it will. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. So you're supposed to turn off the uh, the drive pro part before you get into the legacy part. But if you don't, it's going to force you. Right. I don't press anything yet. So here you basically are comfortable 
if you are an AutoLogic user, because this is that software that is updated on these car lines, BMW, Jaguar, Land Rover, Mercedes, Porsche, Volkswagen, Audi, and Volvo. The trusty blue box. The trusty blue box, and prior to that, the black box, okay? So watch as Pierre selects BMW, obviously. Now, with BMW, uh, up to whatever that month was, I think it was 1999, 98, there it is, says it. Before that, you could not auto-select that top left button. You had to pick your series. You had to, you know, in this case, I would pick three series. I would right. pick and F30. I would go in that way. You'd have to know your E or your F or your G number. Right. But ever since 98, you can just hit that one button, and it will auto-determine the vehicle. It'll tell you the VIN. Last seven of the VIN, which is what everything in BMW land is. And there's, there's the F30 model and a 328D for diesel, X drive, meaning it's all wheel drive. Right. And it's and, an N47, which is a two liter turbo diesel engine. And by the way, you know, just stopping there now, a lot of times you got to auto parts like, you know, from Whirlpack. Now, Whirlpack is great because you can put the VIN number in there and get the decoder because a lot of people don't know. What is it? Is this an N52? Is this, you know, an N60, an N30? Well, guess what? Here, it's going to actually show you that. So it makes life a lot easier for you. And by the way, a lot of times they'll have two different motors that are extremely <laughs> similar in the same year that's in model true. cars. And you that's, to, that's a tough one. Especially vehicles that were California emissions versus non-California emissions and things like that. You got to be careful of your parts. That was one of my, my biggest challenges, not being a Euro guy. Is uh, What motor is this? I tell on? them everything. I tell them the trim code. It's got a sunroof and this and that, and they still want to find that, that badge on the engine or, or the chassis somewhere. It's not going to be there. Oh, good Lord. And by the way, as a, as a shop owner, I had a sheet on my wall with a printout of every E, or at the time there were only E bodies. So the body numbers and the engine numbers was on the wall. So anybody who worked for me would know what they were dealing with. I had them memorized. Well, you do them enough, you don't like anything. Right. You know, Brandon is unbelievable with Hondas because he spent a lot of time with Lots Hondas. Lots of time. Right? Got familiar. So you get to know all the motors. You know, it's just like I go way back, you know, to points and stuff and different cars and motors and fire and order. You get good at it if you do it all the time. Because you Here, back when they were cranking easy. the engines by hand. Almost. Almost. <laughs> I had one of them. I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So now when we're in here, you can see we got body, chassis, drive, quick test, and we'll run that quick test. CPS, CIP, that's coding, which is this tool really made me a lot of money over the years doing coding. Retrofit, so if you're going to put something in the vehicle that you got to kind of or disable something disable that you don't like the function of. Uh, vehicle scan, service functions, and help. So what are you going to pick, Pierre? What one is the best one to give us? As an initial... Uh, button to push. I always hit the quick test first because, and this you should do with any vehicle you work on that has the capability, because this is going to go through every module in the car, and it is going to look for trouble. And you know, some people fail to realize what things exist on the virtual platforms now with all these things talking on a network rather than hardwired. Something, something in a in a body that's causing a problem may shut down something on the powertrain side due you to. Bet. Voltage consumption or something. Yeah, now, and voltage is actually, crazy on these cars. Gonna, so this comes up with codes, and again, we introduced, I introduced a bunch of these codes that we're going to see here. There was only a few codes when we, when I started messing with this car today. But if you go through, hit, I hit next, you're going to see a bunch of faults over two pages, and then no fault after that. However, what I do because I'm lazy, that's my joke line, is I hit the full report button. Because now you basically see everything. Right. And this is a great stuff. report. We print this out to all our customers because it really gives them a good list that's easy to use. It's not intimidating. Sometimes the factory reports can be a little bit difficult to read here. You can see his dynamic stability control, the DSC. It says he has four faults there. And you can go down the list. Can you scroll that, Pierre, so you can see it? Yeah. You know, what I say with this guy's car, cha-ching, I'm going to make some money on this thing. And how long did it take you to do? Not long at all. By the way, you can email this report to people. It's not just printing a copy. Yeah. You can, they can have it on their phone or whatever yeah. in minutes. 
You know, that's that's the nice thing with this. You can get these reports over to your customers if you have a good management program. You know, you could even text the stuff over. And that's what's going to help sell the job and make the customer confident. Right, Brandon? Yeah, absolutely. If my car had this problem before and when I'm done, it's not there. That makes a big difference. It helps instill confidence. They might not know what they're looking at, but they can certainly see a before and after right. and recognize the difference. And nowadays, you know, people are real finicky, aren't they? Most definitely. They're finicky. Everything's expensive, especially if you own a BMW like this guy. You know, BMW, yeah, you got to spend money, right? And here we could kind of show them that here's your problems and here's how we're going to attack the problems. But let's say you're on your end and you didn't know what to do. We're going to show you what Opus IVS can do for you in a bit. But Pierre, run your next test that you wanted to do besides this. And you saw the little email thing up top. You could have emailed it right out on that report. So say I want to go into my, actually, I should have gone out another step. This yeah, is only one more back. Code. Okay, go back one more. I want to go out of this. Now I'm going to look at TPMS, which has three, well, before I introduce the fourth code, it has three codes. So it's DSC. DSC. We have the codes. But now we can go into diagnostic requests. We can go into coding. Um, now, there's a bunch of stuff here, but in this case, uh, we're really into run flat because that's what the codes were all about. If the communication error, hold on. Now, he has, in all fairness, there's been a problem since the dealer had this car under warranty. And if I'm not mistaken, Pierre, didn't they uh, reprogram this module? They reprogrammed everything. But actually, in some talks today, it looks like there may actually be a hardware problem that crept, crept up afterwards. Okay. Uh, I can't totally... Of course, when we worked on this the other night, I think it was in July, is the last time this thing had been programmed. Right. Um, so, so where are you in? So you can basically go through, uh, you know, di again, diagnostics. Uh, in this case, run flat, which it was giving me a little trouble. Now, you'd have to see it's having trouble reading it. That's the fault. Okay. But, you know, one nice thing here is you're not going to be sticking uh, your hand in the middle of the air and getting no help because maybe it has something to do with the tool. Maybe there's something wrong with the car, and maybe you don't know where to go, right, Brandon? Very true. And even though be I'm familiar. jumping ahead of things a little bit, this is actually where ISTA, the factory uh, software, would be better. Because ISTA not only kind of has a what they call test plans, uh, uh, they lead you by the hand, but they also give you wiring diagrams and pinouts and pictures of where you have to hook up and what you're supposed to be getting for test information. Now the only really problem with that, in. the only problem with that, Pierre, is when you don't know how to use ISTA, people are not familiar with it. You could spend a long time, right, Brandon? If someone doesn't know a factory tool, you know, there's buttonology in any tool. It could be a scope, maybe your Pico scope, or maybe mm -hmm. your E scope. If you don't know what buttons to push, hey, that stuff is all nice, but guess what? You don't know where to go. That's why I like this button right here. Mm -hmm. So we got the headset on. We're going to get that guy with the headset on right there in just a little bit. And you know, so it's I, one button away from getting you some good info. I, I look at the tool, any tool I'm using to be an extension of my mind. I might know what it is I'm trying to accomplish, but if I can't make the tool do the work for me, right? Reach out there and make something happen. That's that, the name of the game, being able to do it. That's the name of the game. Through that DLC. You know, there's probably many of you out there, most shops have at least two scan tools nowadays. Right? At least, yeah. And sometimes the tool you're using without mentioning names may come up short. Then what do you do? You try calling your buddy, you do this, and then sometimes you get nowhere. Here, this is the most important thing, Brandon. The most important thing is I could reach out to tech support and find help. They can walk me through a wiring diagram. Maybe they know something. And there's many great information systems out there, mm -hmm. you know, from Identifix, which everyone uses. You know, you can go on All Data, uh, Pro Demand, Motologic. I have them all. So they're all great. But a lot of times, you know, you just don't know what you're looking for. It's, it's nice help. to have somebody that does. It really it does. It gives you confidence and, in turn, makes more revenue for the shop. Exactly. And, you know, saving time. 
Time is money. Now, you know, one of my students that asked me about this tool, he called me up. We're kind of, I say, say student, but he's also now a personal friend because I know him for so many years, sort of like Pierre. And he said, what do you really think? I said, George, I told you, I use it in the shop. You want to come up, check it out. This is the tool to have because it's not just a tool. It's a whole bunch of people behind you. A support, support system. It's an army of support. That's really what it is. And how many times we really fall in to that area like, I am just don't know where to go. You know, you, you're kind of lost. And many times over the years, I've called Pierre or Pierre called me, whatever. We all know something the other guy doesn't know. And that is the nice thing about having this. And especially when someone is doing it day in, day out. Yeah. You know, years back when I did work with the Spire, the Spire had a, hot, a hotline. And JR was one of the guys on the hotline. This guy would know stuff like this. Because you know what? Every day, pretty much, it's going to be the yeah. same thing. I recently did an article, a Tech Corner article on Motor Age Magazine with my really good friend, Chris Martino. You know him from Opus oh, IBS. Yeah. And uh, what those guys have to know is amazing. To be able to think on the spot and interpret what the technician on the other end may or may not be doing as far as following directions. I mean, exactly. And having, sometimes having that kind of talent is phenomenal. Right. And sometimes, like you brought up before, Brandon, you know, the simplest thing, starting with the battery, and you heard Pierre say you make sure you put that battery maintainer on it. Sometimes the simplest things to help you fix the car, but we get tunnel vision. Yeah. Now, one of my lead techs the other day <laughs> sometimes overthinks it. You know, wants to pull out the, I always say, don't Big pull guns. the backhoe out <laughs> if the freaking shovel is going to do the job. He's going crazy. And I happen to pass by. I'm busy doing a million other things. Guilty. And I was like, Dude, what the hell are you doing? It's like you are overthinking this thing. Bring it back to this step. Sure as hell, fix the problem. I once punched the wrong the, the wrong year in a in a scan tool, and it, it set me back about an hour. Yeah, you know, it happens. Simple things, but you know the nice thing again is having someone to go to, mm -hmm. and that's the biggie. Definitely. So where are we at, Pierre? Well, we're at the point where we would actually call for support. Ah. We would actually want ISTA at this point. Yep. So what we're going to do is back out of this all the way, Pierre. Make sure we're all the way out. Free tool. And we're going to have, for a second, we're well, switching over. If we could have uh, uh, Brandon uh, Matthews pop on. I want to show you ISTA. Hey, guys. How you doing? Do you want a big G? Yeah, make him big. We work Saturdays out in California. Hey, Brandon, how you doing? I'm good. How are you guys? Excellent. Thanks. Good. How's the, how's the weather out there? I uh, can't complain. We're a bit spoiled over here. We can complain. <laughs> we got snow. It's cold. Most definitely. Winter in New York. We learned to live with it. Or Pennsylvania. All right, exactly. so you have pretty much control of the tool, correct? Um, so, yeah, I'm going to uh, log into it now. All right, so, yeah, I can just remote right in. And it looks like you guys are working on an F30 there. That is correct, Brandon. We're on uh, an F30. All right. And we want to run a vehicle test with ISTA. So let me go ahead and launch that for us. And we're going to tell you when you're on the factory tool, it does take a little time. And in case you're wondering, how long does it take to get someone like, you know, Brandon on the particular screen? Well, not on your screen, but I'm talking about on your tool. Usually within 15 minutes, we've had and we've done a lot of different cars with them. From Chrysler's to Beamers to Mercedes, uh, Toyotas, I'm going to say an average time is probably 13 minutes. So I've seen. You're telling me when I push the help button, if I'm in a jam, I can expect help within about 15 minutes? About 15 minutes. Gee, there's been stuff I've reported to. I won't mention names to companies where I've had issues, but I still haven't heard back from them, and it's been years. I understand. <laughs> 15 minutes. All too well. Yeah. 15 minutes, I'd say about 13 has been our average. That's pretty impressive. And they do a great job. Now, look at what he's pulling up right away. Factory service bulletins. 
And I think we've all been caught short with our pants down, per se, sometimes, where you're in your favorite service information, and there is not a particular service bulletin in there. And if you overlook that, I mean, we had to do this recently where we thought we had the great information systems that had everything and the factory side had something a little more. And you really don't want to be chasing a problem for a day and a half and find out there was a service bulletin that perfectly addressed it. Guilty. At the end of that, yeah, we Been all there. Are, we've Been all there. that at some point, right? Yeah, those are the ones you learn from though, right? Oh yeah, absolutely. Let's not do this again. Well, you should always look at service bulletins. And then um, look again. And by <laughs> and look way, at, yeah. as an aside to all of this, as a kind of a plug for BMW uh, service information, um, they, uh, there is information that is not necessarily in TIS in BMW land that happens to be in the training PDFs. So anytime you go to NASTF.org, the NASTF website, and go in through that or directly into bmwtechinfo.com, I recommend you try to leave some time to go through training PDFs. They have more in-depth information about things like networking, layout stuff, strategies, things that aren't really published in the service information. That's true. Uh, Curious. Can you save those PDFs you, and view them later? You can save them, however. You can't give them to other people. You can't give them Fair out. Fair enough. Also, they... They dissect them and put some characters between the parts of the file name. So you have to save all the chapters into one folder, remove those two special characters and put a space in, and then it's a real PDF again. Yeah, and you know, the nice thing, we had to go into uh, the BMW service information recently on a 750i um, active hybrid, and there was like nothing in regular service information. I showed you that battery back oh, there, fifteen thousand dollar battery. Not me, pal. You know, things been sitting here because the customers like, well, do I pull the trigger for fifteen grand or don't I? But when you want to read about the system before I'm going to tell this guy you need a fifteen thousand dollar battery, I better be damn sure I understand the system. And I always say RTFI, read the freaking information, because if you don't understand the system, you you're done. And no lie, we called hit the button on the tool. We made sure we got through after reading the information to not second guess ourselves, but have a second, second opinion. opinion. Okay. They got on, they went through it. In fact, you know, they thought it was a good idea to program one module again. There's a module in that battery to see if it would wake it up. We did that. We had done that ourselves because uh, we have ISTER as well. And it really didn't make a difference. The battery just needs to be replaced. If I got more than one test result pointing to the same culprit, I get a lot more confidence than right. and one and again, test result. You really want to pull the trigger, per se, on saying this part is bad, and you're going to look real bad if it's not bad, right? Yeah, and you know, I'm not one to put a number behind confidence, but I mean, I certainly get a little <laughs> bit spooked at $15,000 instead uh, of it. Exactly. <laughs> and you know, it's not your money, so let's say the customer goes for it, and I put it in, and don't fix the car, I, you know, I'm going to be eating then 15 I, grand. I probably wish it was my money, by the way. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so what we uh, have up, I don't see it up on the screen. You got to swap your view of the of the tool there. All right. There, there we go. go. Oh, there we go. So we're in ISTA right here. And what Brandon is doing, you can see this is going to take a little time. It gives us the information like the N47, the 3 Series, and F30, 325D X-Drive, everything you've seen before. But notice it tells you some other things here. Special campaigns, a recall, exhaust, EGR. Oh, well, we're going to talk about that. This man has been back to the dealer so many times with this car. And, of course, all of the, uh, the recalls they've looked at also has a – uh, flex disc issue and a, a service action a yeah. removal oh, engine oil label completed and you can see they supposedly said that now, i had that on my gm vehicle too and they told me they completed it but they kept telling me you need to get it done i said you guys did it i've been here so here it's going through showing you all that and pierre let's let's talk about a few things like your your bottle that we found right 
which is common, by the way, on so, these. Uh, we can't actually, you know, this is actually BMW info. It's not like we want to spread it, but you can you can get this information when you log on the website uh, or use ISTA. Uh, and so there have been a few problems with this vehicle. This is a, a, a bulletin about the uh, level sensor, really, but it's part of the expansion tank. They have another one somewhere. Yep. Um, that is about the EGR plugging. And uh, they basically looked at it and didn't do anything because they didn't have any parts. They still made me go to the dealer to check on it. Mine was not plugged like this yet. This is a picture of a really plugged EGR uh, port. They've had problems with them. I guess they're going to call me again in about a year or two and tell me that, you know, maybe they have parts now. Maybe. Um, That's only a maybe, Pierre. Uh, and EGR also, this, the, uh, this, this is also about a position um, uh, actuator. That uh, was, th th I, th I think actually that was the one they didn't have the parts for that they couldn't do anything about. Um, they did do the flex disc uh, recall on it. In my case, they changed the flex disc and just kind of tightened everything up. My wife has an identical car. They had to change her entire transfer case. Yeah. Her case. It's that flex disc. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's all losing um, some torque. Well, it's a, it's a spline problem. It's, a, it's, a, it's an actual wear problem into the uh, transfer case. Now, let's talk about your big problem that I know you and I have uh, okay. racked our heads with this so, nightmare. So, and when you uh, tell them the story. One day, I drove the car and stopped for a little while at a shop that I work at periodically. And when I went to leave the driveway, um, I got about 50 feet out of the driveway and the car died lights out. No warning. I barely coasted into the adjacent driveway, the, next, the business next door, and tried to start it, no start, no start. After a minute or two, it started right up like nothing had happened. It was running fine. I went back and scanned it, and it had two codes. I don't have the number four right here, but they were a high pressure, a, a failure to meet desired high pressure right. code, and a similar code but under full acceleration. So, so you had a you had a stall type issue and and suspect you had an issue with the high pressure fuel system. Yeah, suspected there was a problem with the high pressure pump. It. At least that's what the coating led to. Now this vehicle was in warranty, and that dealer knows who I am. They, I don't want to play with the car because they might void the warranty, right? <laughs> Pierre used to work for that dealer. <laughs> yes, I worked. For, well, actually, I worked for the predecessor. The, dealer well, but the I same found. dealership. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> so, yes. And I had a BMW shop in the next town for 30 years, and they know me, and I have, you know, I buy parts from them. So, um, so I called them up, brought the car in without touching anything, you know, and uh, they kept it for 29 of the 30 days that would have made it a lemon law. And they lucky you, a, they threw a high pressure pump in it and sent it on its, you know, back to me now. The fact that they kept the 29 days means to me that they had extremely little confidence in their results. That's, that sounds like to me, too. <laughs> they, they only gave it back to me with a high-pressure pump because they had to. But they kind of knew that wasn't it. It didn't happen again for like eight months. Now, I didn't realize that there was a setup to this. The day before I had had the first failure... I had gone below a quarter of a tank of fuel, which I never do, very rarely, filled it up, drove home, did some driving around. I drove about two gallons, 40 miles to the gallon this thing gets. And that's when that event happened. So eight months later, I actually was at a TST meeting down in Jersey, filled it up. These are name brand stations and got home about two gallons worth of fuel. Yep. And the next day, as I went to go out of my driveway, lights out dead. And I thought back on the first incident eight months earlier, and I thought, oh, you know, you start putting things together. They, start, they, they didn't start with the basics of the system. I yep. did some testing. I tested fuel pressure and volume with a flow gauge. Uh, fuel was cleared. It was no air, no dirt. I, it was a good, I don't remember the number, but it was a good a gallons per minute or whatever number. Um, I did a specific gravity test on a, on a diesel, right? You do that. I put a, uh, and we're going to show you in a little bit, uh, a little later after we do the rest of this. I put a, a scope on the fuel pump module 
and looked at both sides of the motor and amperage to the module. And I recorded all of that. And I made it fail. And I, wait, I drove it until it failed, basically. It was kind of intermittent. And what I found was the module was shutting off the pump before it died. The low pressure pump. The low pressure, the feed pump in the tank. Ah, the most important thing, the primary. The primary. Well, you can't make high pressure without low so pressure. So I told That's the dealer it. this, but guess what? They are forced to follow a test plan. <laughs> I'm doing this as a lesson to you because you're not forced to follow a test plan. Follow the test plan. But if something doesn't smell right or look right, second guess. Don't trust. It's their plan. Don't make it always yours. Yeah, and let's talk about what they do with that, that test plan is really to help the techs that work for the particular company. In this case, BMW, Honda has the same sure. thing with the HDS. Many companies are doing this, guided diagnostics, or uh, the Volkswagen Audi tool, Otis does the same damn thing. I personally don't like going through those things, but you know what they go by? Hey, we have right? a tech that may not be that good. We got to do hand-holding and take them through each step. Not all the time are they going to follow aftermarket sure. you know type what? of procedures. Not every tech's a G true. I'm not trying to put you on the spot. No, seriously, you got decades of experience and you know things from the inside out, but you got to consider the average technician. They, they don't. Right. You know? And even when you do know, if you took all our years collectively here, okay, sometimes you just don't know what you don't know. Sure. And you need the help, right? And that's, again, that's the beauty about this because right here, you know, when Pierre and I looked at it, and he did a lot of, we're going to show you inside the car, the module. When you start scoping stuff out, you know, scan tool gets you so far in the right direction. But here he has factory information, and the factory likes doing that. Oh, we found no problem. I remember on a, uh, an X5 uh, BMW gas motor where we found a problem with a misfire using Mode 6 and the ATS misfire software, and they thought we were nuts because ISTA didn't show it. Mm -hmm. We documented everything, and this lady happened to be a lawyer who owned the car. Oh she got a buyback on it because we showed them their motor was, but their software was not programmed to pick that up. It was a low enough problem. They put new injectors. They did heads. Didn't solve the problem. Ouch. There was something else going on on that motor. So, yeah. So, Pierre, finish up your story before we oh. get back to... Mr. Matthews. My car went back to the dealer. I showed the service uh, manager the uh, all the stuff, and he said, we won't get paid on warranty unless we follow the <laughs> test plan, which is true. <laughs> That's a scary They're hamstrung thought. that way, right? They're not going to get paid if they do what I told them they needed to do. Even with proof. Even you know, with you proof. Could, I, you could see the them, problem. I gave them printouts. It's not valid, right? It's not. It's BMW won't. No manufacturer will no. use that. So... Uh, they threw a fuel filter and a fuel uh, heater in it, like like that was going to cause the car to die. But you know what? And now, after, and I told the service manager when I picked it up, I said, "You know, this didn't fix it, right?" And I, but they got paid to do it because it was part it, of the right. test plan. So now I started running the car down to a quarter of a tank every single time I needed was going to refuel it because I didn't want to run out of warranty before this problem was repaired on them. You know, I'm. I'm pig-headed, let's face it. And I, I don't want them to pay for something that I know they, they it, them to not pay for something that I know they should be paying for. Oh, so, you mean wait out to get, get out of warranty type of deal? I went back, <laughs> yeah. and that was the reason I didn't want to tamper with the vehicle too. You know, I didn't want to, I didn't want to cut the harness insulation off and have them say I had tampered with it and ruined it. So it happened again. I brought it back again. And this time they said it's a three strike problem. They changed every single component that touches diesel fuel. The tank, the lines, the in, the, the pre-pump, the pump everything. was bad. That's all they, they had to do, but they gave you everything now. They gave you right. The, the, a filter again, the heater again, the, uh, in, the high pressure pump, the injector lines, the injector. Everything. This is all expensive. Very stuff. super expensive, but you know why they did that, Pierre? Because they had to cover it. They had to cover they it, rule it out. Strike problem. Rule it out, right, Brandon? Or yeah. it's a buyback in our state. It's a yeah. lemon law. Right. And they would have had that car back. Yeah. So finally solved your problem. So I wrote them a letter, by the way, just to finish up. Let me, I'm, you know, I can't get off the camera, right? 
<laughs> I wrote BMW a letter <laughs> outlining in. exactly what was wrong because the second time I went into that service department, the service manager showed me his paperwork, not all well, the customer names, of course, but how many he had. He had 14 GDI and diesel vehicles with that problem right there. Think of how many millions of dollars that was costing BMW. By the way, the BMW software in the DME, the, the module for the fuel pump did not report that it had been shutting it down. Did not report to the DME. The DME did not look at the low pressure sensor before it condemned the high side. Faulty software. So, and then a diagnostic Just process. to see if I can understand what you're saying. So the low side fuel supply pump had an issue and due to this issue, the controlling module Shut was down. shutting it down, but it didn't it didn't but indicate it. Never, it. never coded it. Unbelievable. It didn't code it up. That's there crazy. Were no codes for it, and the, the actual engine uh, programming did not actually was not set up right. Yeah, so that, the dealer see, was not the, the in fault here, right? The dealer was following a set of procedures that they had to follow that were based on faulty pro Program. And you'll always come across something like that. I mean, it's an odd problem, but what do we really do in the aftermarket? We look at DTCs. If there's none and you suspect fuel, we take our scope out and come ramp that pump. Yeah. Right? It's part of knowing the basics. It's yeah. Knowing the basics. And you would do the flow test, but sometimes in a flow test, you may not catch it. Where if you leave it on the scope and you can drive around with it, and maybe you can capture that problem. And, you know, yeah. that's the difference between following a flow chart and really, truly knowing what you're doing. No doubt. No doubt. And not yes. knocking anybody's ability. No. But. Like, you know, you were one of our guest speakers for TSD last week. It's and a lot of fun. Thank you, by the <laughs> way. <laughs> you did your game plan, which I always write about. Game plans are important. You need to know what you have to test. If not, you're going to run into a problem. Absolutely. So say at this point, we're going to go to Brandon. And what you're looking at here on ISTA are the modules okay these are the modules that he went through and we're going to turn the screen over to you brandon and walk them through you know show them the codes and everything that you got on your end and you could see he has three monitors up over there and just think about the information that he has that he could look at being on the other side per se take it away my friend all right. So, yeah, the vehicle test on ISTA did finish uh, several minutes ago, but naturally I didn't want to interrupt you gentlemen. Um, so here on the uh, on the splash page of the program, naturally we can see the control unit tree. The, uh, the vehicle does have several fault codes. The control unit tree is nice. I think a lot of manufacturers are uh, starting to do that where they will show you the network topology. Uh, along with information about each fitted control unit and whether it's responsive, unresponsive, not fitted to the vehicle, or potentially responsive but has some kind of software error, uh, such as being in what BMW calls program abort. Um, so if we move over to the fault screen, definitely quite a few faults in the vehicle. Most of them are not currently present, and uh, many of them related to a low voltage condition. Um, so we don't wanna focus naturally too much on those if they were self-induced, of course. Um, but there are a few present faults, such as one of the RDC sensors. So one of the tire pressure uh, wheel electronics not responding. It looks like uh, potentially um, an issue with that system, as well as an SCR fault, which uh, I think, uh, Pierre had mentioned uh, a pump fault actually for the SDR system. And oddly enough, that system does have several uh, service information bulletins, mostly related to software updates of the DDE or the SCR control units. Um, so there, there is something to consider as well. We could always run the uh, measures plan and see what software updates are or are not available for this vehicle, seeing as how it has had a few dealer trips. Um, I also wanted to touch base on something else that you guys had mentioned about that fuel system scenario. This car is equipped with the Bosch CP 4.1 pumps, and those are the pumps that are very common to uh, self grenade and produce swarf. So there may have been something to that with regards to the dealership 
ending up replacing the rest of the fuel system, the injectors and rail, et cetera. They may have been uh, doing so thinking that there could have been a potential uh, contamination issue of the fuel system as well before they actually figured out what was wrong with the low pressure side of the system. All right, so going back to the ISTA uh, screen here, we can definitely see all the faults and, and we can really do whatever we'd like. We can run test plans for those particular faults. We can, of course, delete fault memory. Uh, like I said, we could actually calculate uh, a measures plan to see what software updates were available for the vehicle. Um, the only uh, present faults that we may or may not want to calculate a test plan for uh, that I see are related to the tire pressure system. And I know that uh, that was something that Pierre had mentioned he did have a warning light on for. And it looks like there was a couple uh, transmission faults from the front right wheel electronics as well as the front left wheel electronics. And these cars use a a different tire pressure system than they used to. They don't have an in individual module anymore for the RDC system. They actually use a remote receiver which handles both the key fob as well as the wheel electronics. That is connected to the front electronics module via a LIN bus, uh, bus line. And then the FEM is connected uh, to the DSC, which is the Dynamic Stability Control Unit or ABS module via flex ray network. So the bus message basically gets transferred all over the place on this vehicle. And ultimately the processing and storing of fault codes is done in the DSC control unit. Brandon, sorry to interrupt you, but we have a couple of questions. First one I'll read here. Absolutely. What is a measured plan for those that don't know. So a measures plan would be BMW's version of what the Opus or Legacy AutoLogic tool is calling CIP, coding individualization and programming. So on the factory tool, it's a, an action plan or a measures plan would basically be running a bit of software within the program, which will then ping every single control unit on the vehicle and check its program status and compare that to the latest program status available on the BMW server in Germany. Our tool, the Opus tool, would do the same thing on the legacy side, and it would communicate with our server and compare the program status of each individual control unit software level and compare that to the latest software level available. Excellent. Brandon, thanks for that information. That's great stuff. Listen, we got another question coming in here. Is, is BMW running three-phase fuel pumps? I know looking at the wiring diagram for this car, we just see two wires going into the to the DC motor, so it doesn't appear to. But can you elaborate uh, a little bit? Further? This particular car does not, but but almost every single new model BMW is running a three phase pump. Good. That that's Absolutely. really important to know. Thank you. They started phasing it in on cars that were ethanol cars, ethanol blend cars, and then um, pretty much everything after you know everything very very modern is running a three phase pump. Thank you. Excellent. All right. Of course. So anyways, um, so yeah, an action plan is essentially just the, a CIP programming plan using the BMW software. I could already tell you just from the information and the vehicle details here, the eye level of this vehicle is fairly high already. So uh, if we were to, to uh, look at this, this value right here on the splash page of the vehicle detail screen, we could see that the current eye level of the vehicle is from March 20th of 2020. Now that's not necessarily the date that the vehicle was last programmed. Uh, that is the date that BMW put out that particular set of programming data. So we know that the last data status of this car was from March of 2020. Uh, so. Just so you know, Brandon, this car was brought up to the next eye level in May of 2020. Right. That's when they did it. Right, right. Absolutely. So uh, 
likely got the March of 2020 software release from BMW as there likely just was not an update in the programming data package from March to May. Hey, you know, I got to throw something in here and I'm not shy to admit it. Uh, this is all outside of my normal realm of thinking. I, I wouldn't know any of this stuff. So, I mean, this has given me confidence seeing somebody like you on the other side of the country being able to supply support for someone like me. Absolutely. Like a whole bunch of shops that are out there, right? I believe it. <laughs> Definitely. You know, look, you, it's very difficult you know your stuff. to stay on top of stuff. He's a specialist and look, three, I don't have three monitors. <laughs> That's a lot of info. So, yeah, I think uh, one of the beautiful things about the Drive Pro ES tool is its versatility, right? So as you demonstrated, there are several software packages right on the tool, plus its versatility in that we have the ability to run a lot of OE platforms on this tool for you. So, you know, we can run OE Volvo, OE Mercedes, OE BMW, GM, Ford, I mean, you name it, Toyota, several manufacturer original software. Uh, because let's face it, no matter how good the scan tool is, there is always going to be a need for factory information and factory software from time to time. So the ability to do that is, uh, is undoubtedly very, very good. You know, the other thing I'd like to mention here, Brandon, I know what we always do when we call up for tech support from you guys. I always ask like for screenshots so I can give it to my customer or the report out of the factory tool. That way the customer sees that you can take care of their vehicle and their newer vehicles as well because you have the factory software available to you at your shop. So I, oh. I always appreciate when you guys email me that stuff over. It really makes a difference in my opinion. We, we keep everything in Dropbox and either text, text to the customer or even print it out, whatever oh, they yeah. want to email it. Yeah, I'm, I'm absolutely glad you mentioned that because that's something that is obviously great on our end to know before we go closing a program or something like that and having to start over. So, yeah, I mean, in this scenario, it would be absolutely easy for me. I would just need to hit this little print icon on the top of Vista here, uh, and I would want to print the fault memory list. I would likely just print it to a PDF uh, and then naturally I can save it and email it to you quite easily, actually. So, yeah, not a problem whatsoever. Yeah, that's very cool. I think that's super important, you know, value for the shop to have and valuable for the customer. Yeah, Good absolutely. Value. Especially in the day and age now where a lot of these vehicles are coming into the workshops from a collision center, right? So a lot of uh, body work or collision centers do work on the vehicle and they have to sublet the car to a repair shop just for service functions, programming of control units, initializing headlights and stuff like that. So you see a merge of the collision industry and the repair industry uh, from the sense of pre and post scans and stuff like that as well. So absolutely, those things are becoming a requirement. Also, a good thing in here is um, the repair and maintenance schedule. When people, you know, don't realize what they may need to do with their vehicle, that's where you can get some good information out of that as well. And obviously, if you change, and we should probably bring this up, you know, having an LSID or VSP, um, Many don't out there, and if they need to change a module, you know, these guys need to sign up, go to nastf.org, nastf.org, and make sure you have your vehicle service professional or locksmith license because they will not be able to program something if there's an issue with a module. There's vehicle theft in all of these modules, right? So that is something I know um, that you're – your people always kind of tell someone, hey, you can't do that. The other one is hybrid information. You know, the, <laughs> the guy I had on, you know, even asked me, he said, oh, we don't have on file. Okay. I was one of about 15 people that wrote the ASC L3 test questions and teach hybrid stuff. But I understand that I, I really appreciated it. Mm -hmm. I sent it to them. You know why? They don't want to give information to someone 
that may not have the right training. And when you're dealing with high voltage, you know, it's in a mechanics nature, important. right? Yeah. God <laughs> forbid you touch the wrong thing. So Ouch. they're really up on it for you guys that are out there. You know, they really seem to be up on their game and you could be up on your game having this support and this tool. That's the name of the game. So we're going to show you that module. Um, well, he's calculating some measured plans. So we're going to go in. And Pierre, you can put that light on in the car. And we're going to show you where that module is in the vehicle. Uh, of course, if you can see my back seat, you see that it's a muddy mess. But uh, by the way, that's because it, uh, it's a special uh, form car cover, seat cover, because I have a dog. You have a dog? What's that have to do with your module? It has nothing to do with the module, but it's the reason why the seat looks like this. Okay, this is the module. It's got a power wire, which I put an amp, a low amp probe around, and it's got... It's actually got three wires to the pump, but one of them is a ground, uh, like a ground shield bleed. So the green wire and this uh, orange, uh, yellow striped wire, um, these are the two power wires for this fuel pump. The pump itself is mounted underneath the seat, uh, but I didn't have to actually go to the pump. I could get all my information here. You know, it's great. Just wet referencing a wiring diagram and taking your time. You figure all that stuff out. That's, Save yourself some time. Yeah, that's right. And by the way, this cover just pops out of this car. It's a, you put the seat back down, you pull it off with your hands, and it pops out of some, like, hooked structures down below. Very easy to reach. I always go for the easy stuff first. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. you know, really what we're showing you is if the dealer would have done current ramping, took their lab scope out. They would have seen it. They would have seen it, and they wouldn't have had to replace the whole system. <laughs> but you know what? Again, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to reiterate. Test plans are made. In fact, Jerry was talking about this. Test plans are made for, you know, the, the average tech, not the people like us who have a lot of training and a lot of equipment. And if you don't set that up properly, you might get the wrong information. If you don't know how to read a wiring diagram and hit the wrong, it, and test the right wire connections, you will get the wrong information. And so as a manufacturer, they build these procedures so that, you know, kind of everybody in the shop that's going to get that job can do it. But unfortunately, there's also a certain amount of slippage, like this car, of cars that go through the whole process and get the wrong answer. And they had the right information with the wrong answer. You know, Pierre, I don't, <laughs> I don't want people to misconstrue what we're trying to say. I'm not saying, I don't think any of us are saying test plans are bad. There's certainly no, no, they're a, actually wonderful. a ton of information we can gain from them so no we doubt. can learn about the systems and, and what the computers expect to see. You know what I say? I have trust issues. That's yeah. fair. I don't always trust everything. I, I don't, well... I don't trust the scan tool. I don't trust the, the the results until I've confirmed it. Brandon talks about this in his seminars. I want to see that confirmation two or three ways. Right? Yeah. yeah. A few and hours on the target. If yeah. something don't make sense, you're missing something. That's yep. right. And you're that's what they didn't do here. And, and they I, missed that. I always tell people I want to be a little bit like a two-year-old. What does a two-year-old always say? Why, 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 why? <laughs> right. And until those answers are are firm. You know, you know what they, you can trust them. Keep asking why. No, that All was right, that. let's Very let's easy. see where Brandon out in California is on our ISTA tool. It's going to take just a few more minutes. Uh, still calculating that action plan. Okay, so you can see here. Oh. He's calculating a plan here. It says, please wait, like it normally does. And again, you got to be patient. You know, you're working on a sophisticated vehicle with software that basically takes a little time. And by the way, you know, back to a point that we made earlier, something I screwed up when we hooked this up. You notice how long this is taking. If you didn't have a power supply on this vehicle, the whole thing would crash in the middle of the process. Yeah, that's that's a very important point. It would you would have a nightmare, and if you start losing modules on a car like this, you're talking serious money, right? Serious coin. So, so up to the point, the dealer replaced everything that touched fuel, right? Yes. It's like taking your transmission and to be diagnosed. They overhaul the whole thing. Of course, it's going to work. That's right. 
But the idea behind well, what, we hope, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, we hope because they right. did it right. I hope it wasn't a TPS switch. But, but sensor. backing out, <laughs> reviewing the information about the system, the wiring diagram, right? The roadmap for the car. Roadmap for the car. That's you you right. kind of you come up with your own test plans. That's right. So uh, I never diagnose a system without printing out on, and I'm old school, printing out on paper the wiring diagram for whatever I'm testing. There's two reasons for that. There's really three reasons. Number one, I get interrupted 8 million times a day. I want to write my notes. This was my test result. This was my test result. That's hard to do in a, on, a, on a screen. Also, when I'm before and after, I want to show that to the customer. It's going to be part of the reason why they have to pay for all that right. time, right? You know, that is a biggie that even years back, working on a particular car, the bill was high because it was diagnosis and stuff. And we had to actually, oh, a little bit of a buggy. Yeah, uh, so. We had to actually show them, look at all the stuff we had to go through. And we traced it out with color highlighters to show them, look, here's where we had to keep checking. Yeah, but it was only this little thing you fixed. But we had to go through so much of the roadmap. And looking at a wiring diagram, super important. Now, you know, with DIN being a different type of diagram like the Germans use, maybe you're not that familiar with it. And I'd highly recommend you make sure the wires match up on the diagram. I think we've all been there, Brandon. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I had to download an app for, for German, the colors in, in German, so yeah. I could keep up with it because... Uh, yeah, that's tough. And, and by the way, you know, as an as a add-on to that, if you ever print out a wiring diagram, I've seen this many times, and the wires do not match, stop! <laughs> Something's wrong. Something's do not wrong. continue. Maybe now, your car was actually a year six before, months earlier, or right. whatever it is. Production. Nissan is famous for that stuff. And, um, and if you have the wrong wire colors, there you're you're following the wrong map. You got the wrong information, and and you're going to waste a lot of time because of that. So always do that. I always look at all the colors. If, if you may think I'm wasting that few minutes or whatever it takes, but. I'm not. I don't make that mistake because, well, guess what? I made that mistake. Now, here's another point I'd like to bring up. You can see this test plan is taking time, and this is real. Yeah. This is real time. But you know what? Think about how valuable your time is. Now, we've done this here. If they're running through something, we leave it. You work on we got a maintainer. I'm working on some other car. Yeah. You got to make money. Time is money. This is another important feature about this system. I don't want to just call it a tool. It's a system because you're getting a whole a whole thing, a whole support system with you, right? It's yeah. not just you're getting a tool and you put it on there and you're on your own. This is a support feature. So you could be doing something else because it does take time. We can't speed this up. And it didn't matter if he was here in the building, okay, it's not going to be any faster. We're on a one gig connection out to California. This is how long is the takes, just the way it is. And if you're on like Otis or any other European tool, they're slow. You're not getting there fast. People don't realize it. And it's another reason, you know, and Chris is here, worked for a Volkswagen Audi place. You go into dealerships, and I know this for a fact, they will all have a different scan tool than a factory tool because at flat rate, how you can make money? Not if you're forced to stay within the boundaries. You know, the and then if they need to, then they'll jump on and program or whatever. And with Otis, it's a clunky tool. You can't just go in from here and program. You got to go out of their service plan. And sometimes you can get stuck into that and then go all the way back in and do programming and then go back out again. It's like, what guy thought this up? It's just the way a lot of these Euro tools are, including Vita for Volvos, and they're all a bit clunky, okay? And then if you ever uh, uh, go into Land, uh, Land Rover or uh, Jaguar, yeah. the SDDs, oh, it sounds like you have a disease. Well, it's almost like it working with that software. <laughs> Everything is backwards. It's made by Teradyne. Teradyne, you know, makes Ford, makes the Honda HDS, makes Mazda, makes the Mercedes software. But boy, oh boy, on that tool, it could be difficult. And in fact, they had a great webinar. I think Tom did it, uh, who's one of their techs that works on that car line. 
And if you're not familiar with that tool, again, you don't need to get so familiar because you got tech help. That little button right up here, that's your best friend. That's your best friend. So as it's going through here, what else you see there? It's going to take a little longer. And by the way, you can see on their powertrain how you can thumb down to digital diesel electronics and then engine start, fuel systems, going down the whole list. And this thing is still calculating that plan, and hopefully uh, it comes up with something sooner than later. So maybe a couple of hints on uh, other BMW things. Uh, I really am a fan of going to the website, the factory website, for certain types of information. You can get as-built data. Now, if you work on cars that have never been modified, it may not matter to you. You can look up parts and buy the new parts that's correct. But when you get a car and you've got seven of whatever in a row and they were all wrong. <laughs> um, There's a little as-built date you problem. You better go look at your as-built data and figure out how much this car's been butchered, especially if it was a car that came out of some place that had major flooding and it should have been totaled and somebody went to the junkyard and took a lot of other parts and put them in the car. Oh, we've all seen that before. Oh, yeah. What a nightmare. Oh, Always yeah, nightmare. it's terrible. So... Um, I'm just saying there's a lot of things on that website and other manufacturers have this too, by the way. Yeah. Um, but you know, I'm just, because I know BMW, you go on that, if, if it's like $30 a day, have some time set aside to download every, you're entitled to it. You paid for it. Just can't share it. One you of can't share it. Can't it's, share yours. It. It's, it, it's yours, but you can get the PDF. You can look at wiring diagrams. You can look at, uh, you know, the newest updated parts, by the way, there's a caveat there. BMW has been chopping out a lot of old parts over the years. So sometimes something is actually not available through BMW anymore. It worldwide. Right. So if it's an older car, like I see some real old crazy stuff. Um, sometimes you actually need an old copy of the parts system to find the number for something that's not going to be available from the old microfiche anymore. system. Because it came from the or whatever. Good Lord. You know, I, <laughs> I just worked on a car that made like 1,600 to 1,700 of these cars in the 70s. Wow. Never brought them to this country. You know that's a parts nightmare, right? Um, uh, Brandon just had up a great wiring diagram there. That's yeah. And through. Actually, about I, that. Uh, if you could pull that back up so they can take a peek at that. Yeah, I can pull it up. Uh, I also, just to show you another cool aspect, uh, again, like I was saying before, one of the things I love about the, the tool in general or the system, as you called it, is its flexibility, right? So uh, we use a, a Windows-based tool, which allows us a lot more flexibility in what we can do. So what I did there was I I essentially pulled up a schematic of the fuel system. And then while you guys were chatting, I actually copied that, or I took a snippet of it. I moved it to the tool uh, desktop, and then I dropped it in a file folder. Uh, so let me show you. So are you doing our research for us? I yeah, am, basically. That's, 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 that's the point, right? Talk about saving time. Exactly. Absolutely. And not only that, but navigating through something you don't know. Yeah. including the information system. So uh, basically I went ahead and I dropped the wiring schematic in the file manager and in the photo section on the tool for you to be wow. on your that. own. There right. You so now let's say you didn't have this on your side, everyone out there. Now you have this and you can see the whole wiring diagram of that fuel system. And that's right. where, you know, Pierre knew what wire back there looking at a wiring diagram to go to. I love this. You focus your attention where it needs to be. Ah, right. you hit the nail on the head. Focus your attention because time is money, isn't it? Yeah, this is perfect. And why fool around with something? Maybe, like you said, you're not that familiar with it. Not, no. Not hard and at all. when something comes in, like other people go, oh, you know everything. If I knew everything, I wouldn't be here. Yeah, right? sure. You got to realize that. You need help and stuff. And someone who does this every day is going to know more than you and I, just the way it is. Now, there's nothing that makes you better on working on a vehicle than getting your ass kicked on that vehicle, right? Because you start reading everything, you research everything, and these guys are doing it for you. It makes it that much easier. I'll tell you what. I, I spent some time down. You guys know I spent some time in Florida. 
Uh, I worked at a really nice shop. You should who, be there who, now. Who actually, yeah, I wish I was. <laughs> had a really nice shop, and, and, and they had, a, a, I'll call him a, a lead tech, who did all this kind of work for us. And, I mean, he would hand me a file on a car. I'd grab some preliminary information, right, stuff like, like we've demonstrated here. And, and 20 minutes later, he's handing me a stack of papers. There's description of the system, the components, the wiring diagram. And, and you just hit the nail on the head. That was perfect. System description. How is it supposed to work? What is given that command there? Gee, we, right. we could make, I always go to this one. You'll remember this one, a basic horn circuit. We ground a relay yep. and it works, right? But go to like a mid 2000s Chrysler vehicle, enough. right? <laughs> You're getting on the telephone and it's calling another computer under the hood. But it still sounds like beep beep when beep, you push beep. the pad. Yeah, it's all different. Totally different. What else do you have out there for us, uh, Brandon? Well, the action plan did uh, finish calculating, and in true BMW fashion, despite this 2015 vehicle being programmed already uh, in March of 2020, there are still three software updates, I believe, <laughs> I that, that released from wow. between March 2020 and today's date. Uh, so we have the ACSM, which is the Advanced Craft Safety Module, so the Airbag Module, the DDE, Digital Diesel Electronics, and the REM, the Rear Electronics Module. So as you can see, the, the current eye level from March of 2020 and the target eye level from November of 2020. So between the time the vehicle was programmed in March to November, three more software updates available for this car. Get your dollar out, son. Wow. Well, and th and then again to uh, you know to go a step further, we now have choices, right? So we could now perform this programming session if we desire to. Uh, if for any reason there was a bulletin or a related fault code or a uh, you know a customer complaint that that you know fit a particular criteria for a software update, we could perform it using the drive pro as a j2534 pass through if i were to hit this button here in the right bottom corner to perform the action plan or better yet and quicker yet we could close this program and go right back to the legacy software and program those three modules one at a time using the drive pro tool directly wow. and right. explain that brandon how bmw likes you to do all the modules <laughs> and take so, a year or a day it's it's not even a like anymore. Um, so for e-chassis cars and, and several of them, they did give you the ability to exclude the infotainment modules because they were dropping like flies, right? The, the E65 7 Series would come in, the programming event would take 36 hours literally, and by the time it was done, there would be two or three entertainment modules that were unresponsive. So they they... They counteracted yeah, no, no. that by giving you an option to exclude the entertainment modules and program the rest of the car. But those were your only two options, either program the entire vehicle without entertainment system or entire vehicle with entertainment system. Right. And, and that was know, only for each chassis. Another big issue with BMW when you did everything, if the wire was going through the window and you didn't trip the door switch, the window may go up and down as it's going through the programming phases. And if you unplug it, or I should say the vehicle unplugs it when the window went up, boy, are you going to have a problem. You know, there's a great question that came in. I oh, get this question sure. a lot is, should we go ahead and update computers just to do it because there's a program available? Or should we wait until it, it really needs it? Actually, the question was more like, should it be a service, you know, like you do an oil change, or should you do it as needed? And you know what? That really comes down to the question of your relationship with your customers and who they are. And aren't there also some manufacturers on Chrysler, if I'm not mistaken, must you be up to date on software before they consider a warranty repair? Uh, Correct. That's also, so I yep. would say, um, you know, you, that's actually a bit of a tightrope walk. There. Maybe, maybe what if they were referring <laughs> to BMW? Um, I've uh, always offered it to my customers. I also told them that it might create some issues down the road. Ah, that's going to bring that up. It's a but I statement. always left it to them, and I never made it a hard sell. That was my way of doing business. Now, there's two ways that goes. One is they say, yes, you're good. But if they say no and they have a problem, they can't come back and say to you, you didn't, tell you didn't do your job. That's true. And that needs to go down on the RO, oh, yeah. get and printed they sign, out. And they initial it or something. That's our responsibility. Exactly. Yeah, it is. That's correct. our responsibility. You know, because that's how I did it. 
The, the big thing is the adaptations change. So especially if it has to do with engine or tranny, someone may have brick, broken that car in with maybe soft, soft shifts or hard shifts. Now they go out and they think there's a problem after you programmed it. Many softwares, you can't even go back. No. You're on the latest. How about, can't do it. How about issues with a high mileage vehicle when you got coking on a throttle plate? And the idle's learned. Yes. Right? <laughs> yes. You do a reprogram uh, and it right. won't yeah. even start an idle. That's right. So, yeah. so, so all of those things, I, I, uh, it's a good I question. learned, I learned question. years ago from a hard experience, we make mistakes, where I did not inform a customer of something and it bit me, that I got to the point where I always informed my customers of everything and then let them decide. Treat them like adults. They are adults. Yeah. You don't, know, you got to kill them. it out in the air somewhere. You got to kill them with paper or email it and whatever you do, you got to document. If you don't document it on your RO, like I said, one of my guys made a mistake. We didn't tell the Opus people that, you know, cause for years we've been giving customers all of the paperwork, especially on a factory tool. It's difficult if you don't tell them for them to go back, they're on a different case. You may not even get the guy right away. Ask for the report. When you go on there, just say, Hey, if you're on Chrysler, you're on you know, in this case, BMW. Can I have that report? He showed you before how easy it is, but if you don't tell them up front, it may be more difficult to retrieve that later. Because we had that on a radio on an Audi, a 2018 Audi, where my guy forgot to do that. Lucky, the guy still had a window open, and he sent us a report. It was nice enough to do that. Oh, good. Because if he closed that, we would have been done. You know, well, customers radio work, but still, you rather go, and paper sells, doesn't it? Sure. When you give that customer, you know, a bunch of papers like this and they see it, they go home with it or you email them. It is super impressive. I can't tell you how many times it has helped us get other people. Females are a majority of our customers here. And it really helps when they go home and the significant other says, hey, what the hell did you pay X amount of dollars for? They show them that. There it is. And here's the explanation. That's a builder of customer relations. That's where it really is. It really helps. Absolutely. I, I think that uh, you guys kind of hit the head of the nail in that your question, you know, should we program a car just because there's software updates available? It's, I don't think anyone can answer that with a single yes or no, right? That is always going to depend on the particular customer, the particular vehicle, the particular module, the particular, you know, mileage, the problem. So, uh, you know, the beauty there is if you're using a, a tool like the Opus tool, when you click that support button, those are perfect types of questions to ask, right? Because when you click that button, you're going to get someone like me on BMW or someone like Chris Martino on Volkswagen Audi, someone that has experience with that particular brand that can help answer those questions like, hey, is this a safe module to program? Is this a risky module to program? Does my symptom even, you know, is it even going to be helped with programming a module or programming a vehicle what modules should be programmed individually what modules should be programmed in groups or when is it the best idea to program the complete vehicle like i think your case g when you were talking about that hybrid car right right so yeah very and, very know, dependent another good thing is obviously it is just not brandon on the uh, the bmw side there's people he's on the west coast so he can cover different hours obviously but there's someone in the New York office on the East Coast time, the, or real time, I call it, right? So someone's on the real time over <laughs> here. And these guys, of course, they speak to each other. They're working for the same company, and they're working for you, the customer. So they have a lot of information, and sometimes more heads better than one. You know, that's a good point, too. How many times do you have to wait for information for other, other companies where they're only open in oh, one section of the country, one, and, and you're, you're three hours offset? you got to wait. Yeah. That's tough. So they got some good coverage Monday through Saturday, no Sundays. And they usually tell you, I get emails like, you know, if it's a holiday, uh, Christmas or something, they'll say, you know, there's no support on this particular day or limited hours. I think when we had a big storm out here recently, there was uh, limited hours um, on the East Coast and the West Coast guys took over. So, yeah, it works really well. You got to check it out. So I don't know if do you want to, Brandon, do you want to program uh, one module through the legacy software? 
show them how uh, easy that is? Or? I, yeah, I think what we'll do is we'll probably just demo it. We won't actually hit okay. program just sure. just due to timing. You know, we don't want to have true. everyone waiting here for that's, another hour real uh, waiting for the file. <laughs> but but we can go through the process and kind of mimic that's what we would do. So let's cool. say we wanted to program, you know, the REM or the ACSM. Uh, in this case, I'm going to go ahead and close out the factory software here. You know, sometimes using an extension cable. Uh, I'll just throw this out there. Right now, if you look on the tool, and we see this quite a bit, um, when it shows you the voltage, we're using an extension cable so Pierre can be out with the tool next to him. Uh, highly recommend when trying to program something, do not use a long OBD2 extension wire. We've seen this a few times where there's like maybe not a full voltage drop because you could go check in there even with a meter. Your maintain is putting out the right amount, but with that cable, the software sometimes will show you a lower voltage. So just something that we noticed and kind of give you that tip. There's it's definitely a lot of prerequisites way. like that, like you had mentioned earlier about the windows. I mean, BMWs, um, I think programming is actually very safe with BMWs if you take the right precautions. And I think we have a webinar coming in March that I'm going to do that kind of walks through a lot of those precautions. But things that you wouldn't even think of in BMW land, like, you know, again, when you're programming with the factory tool, uh, it's going to program the entire vehicle, especially if it's an F or G body. You don't have an option to exclude the entertainment modules. So you click that programming button. If there's a CD in the CD drive or a USB stick plugged into the glove box, which is connected to the to the radio or the head unit, that module will fail programming. So a lot of a lot of small things like that. Windows, you know, free to operate. You know, sunroof free to operate. Wipers free to operate, etc. And then, Brandon, I also want to mention, like I have right here, the blue cable that is with the internet connection is a little bit different than the cable we currently have on the vehicle. You got to make sure you're using the right cable when you go to program or go in there because this is going to be a different connection setup than what we currently have on the car. So make sure that you listen to the information that the tech is giving you online. And they're real helpful. They do walk you through, tell you to put a maintainer on the vehicle, you know, maybe trip the, the door switch rather than jerking with the wire through the window. And then, as I said before, the window goes up, pulls it out, not gonna be fun. And let me get out of the way while he shows the legacy software and pretty much of how to program a module. And again, I made tons of money with this tool as well as Pierre did. He oh, yeah. only used it on BMW, I but I've used this on a lot. Auto logic. Yeah, this absolutely. Three, 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 I bought the original black box and then the blue box. So what we would do is naturally we would select the car. We would go into CIP. We would check the version, right? This is our version of programming data files. So similar to how we were looking at the eye level of BMW, this just allows us to know what level of software files uh, we have available for the car from BMW. It will ask you about the cable that you just mentioned. Uh, we're not gonna need it now because I'm just going through a, a demo with it, of course. But normally we would use that programming cable because this vehicle does program over, uh, over ethernet, right? So it is a DOIP car or diagnostic over internet protocol car. So Ethernet lines running from the gateway module, in this case being the FEM, to the DLC, right? Now, that did go a bit faster than it would normally naturally because, again, you know, we're not naturally uh, actually going to program this car. So we weren't reading the data status all out of all the modules. But essentially, this would come up with that measures plan just like it did on the BMW software. And it right. will list every single module and what modules have updates available, right? We could then... In contrary to BMW's tool, we can change the action plan to, you know, format exactly what we wanted to do. So, you know, if we wanted to get in here and program only the airbag control unit, we could select that module uh, to update it. And naturally, it will code that module after the update is completed. We would save that change 
and we could then send an order for the file, download the file, go right back into CIP and carry out the programming, right? And that's and all it, done directly through the tool. Uh, no longer, you know, the days of blue box. I'm sure you guys remember having to hook up to the PC. This wouldn't be necessary anymore. As long as you're connected to Wi-Fi, you would simply close the software, go to your file manager, go to this order manager button, and we can send and download the file order directly from the tool, right? And many times it's simply coding procedures that could do it rather than programming when you do something. Oh, absolutely. You know, a lot of modules, especially if they're module replacements, a lot of modules are already coming programmed with the latest software and they just need coding or or what a lot of other manufacturers call configuration, right? Inputting the vehicle details into those modules so the module software knows what operating parameters to work with. So it's almost like having one box available for multiple cars and you just tweak a few things, right? Is that exactly. how you describe coding? Yeah. So this is super helpful. And uh, Brandon, we thank you for coming on with us and of course. showing us. And I do want to bring up one thing that you said before. You know, Opus has a lot of specific webinars, whether it be Chris uh, Martino that's here with us or uh, Brandon out there or other people that work for him. I know Tom did some and. They have a whole bunch of them, and they have them up, I believe, on their website, on their YouTube channel. So you could go and view these webinars that could be helpful to you if you're not that familiar with something. So there's good tips, and one, I think there's two of them coming up that I got emails on, and probably more. So check in with them, and we'll go through a few other things here. But I want to thank you, uh, Brandon. Thanks for being on and coming out. And no problem. All you Thanks guys, for having me. thank you. We appreciate it. You have a good one. I know I'll be speaking to you sometime in the future. <laughs> Sounds good. Bye bye. Take care, Brandon. Yep. Thank you. Thanks so much. So one of the nice things here, an exclusive web offer. This is something that I believe Gina will have emailed out to you. But you get a free battery maintainer with purchase of the Drive Pro ES. Okay, the Drive Pro ES. It's licensed OE software, not hack stuff. And there's a lot of hack stuff out there. I'm going to give you a little word on that. I remember one guy that worked for my son. He bought a tool. When it seems too cheap, there's got to be a problem. And guess what? He locked up this vehicle. Lucky I had the factory software at the time. Because you lock something up, you're not going to get it out. So don't think you're getting a deal and you can buy all this hack software. You need the real stuff. Okay? This is genuine software. Live brand specific repair guidance. So you just seen that. You experienced that. That number one, like Brandon said here, you could look at the time you could save. You don't need to look it up. Time is money, right? Built in remote uh, flash programming so they can do that and much more. Again, that wiring diagram. If it's something to help you out or some information, they can put that right on your tablet. Now, you're not going to see, I do want to say this because some people go, I don't know. I had them on there, and I didn't see that. It's something you don't see. They don't throw it up on your tablet. Everything you've seen here on BMW would be in the background on your tablet. You wouldn't necessarily see it, nor do you need to see it. Again, if you ask them, can I have those some screenshots? Can I have the report? They'll be more than glad, but tell them up front. Okay? So it works real well. This battery maintainer, rather than $5.99, you get it for free. And this offer is up to 227 So almost the end of the month by one day, and I think that's a Sunday. So get it in if you're interested. It's a 90-amp output with 13.4, which many of these Euro cars like. And as Pierre and I know, you know, I used to have an expensive Fronius. I still have it. It's actually over there. I have an expensive Fronius unit that, you know, now it doesn't go up to the real you know, 80, 90 amps that you need on all of these newer vehicles, okay? So you may need to upgrade if you don't have it. Don't use daddy's battery charger. Oh, God, because no. noise. That could be a lot of noise. A lot of, what's that noise from? AC voltage, right? So mm -hmm. we don't want that. So just to wrap it up here, the IVS 360, Drive Pro ES, experts when you need it. More information, go to info.us at opus.com. IVS.com. 
We also want to remind you that coming up for TST, the TST big event, and yes, Opus is one of our sponsors. So we have a special two day, unfortunately, with this pandemic. Uh, it will not be live at the hotel, so don't show up there. You mean because you can't have 700 people in the room? <laughs> no. There's going to be 700-plus <laughs> people online. It's going to be really cool. It's virtual. And don't worry, you don't have to walk around with little avatar men. It's really simple. You click on something. You can go see a sponsor. You can see what they have. They can talk to you. Then we got a lineup. We got Scott Manna, Okay. Scott Manna, and all of this is updated. If you already signed up, please don't email us. We'll email you. You will get your tablet mailed to you, okay, with all brand new software on it, including the second day software. So we have Scott Manna. We got Bobby G. He's an ex Audi Volkswagen engineer and an ex Ford engineer. He works on the uh, SAE committee. We're going to a six-digit code. He has some really great information for you. He's a great speaker and a nice guy. On a mountain, Michigan, we always get together. Great dude. We also have John Anello. Oh, well, no. What can I say about my buddy Anello? Not enough. Larger than life and five foot La <laughs> Larger than life. <laughs> and he bounces around like there's no tomorrow. You, he's entertaining. He, he calls me. He's my second girlfriend, I think. I swear. The Gee, guys, the I guys rode with him for a week once, and he left me at two shops. Kind of normal. And, you know, <laughs> he's driving with his knees. He's on his phone. It's enough to scare the death out of you, right? But he's, he's an amazing <laughs> character. We have on Sunday morning. And, by the way, you can win. You know all the prizes and stuff we give out? You go to our vendor boots. You get like a little token. It'll be like a little game thing where you got to register. You go in. We got some great giveaways as normal for you, but you got to go visit those sponsors, okay? Second day, we got my buddy, Vin Waterhouse. So you guys that are owners of shop, well, you know what? Time is money. He would tell you that you need something like this. Without management training, you know, and maybe even if you're a tech, you don't even realize, you know, you go to that tool truck, you spend a half hour. How are you going to make that half hour time up? You do need the tools, but we need to be proficient. So he's going to be talking about proficiency, both for shop owners and technicians. Then we have our buddy, Calm Capriato from Remarkable Results. Calm will be doing some great stuff with some people that Calm and I are putting together that he's going to do a roundtable live and you can ask questions, chime in. And then you have myself, Bill, who's not here, and this guy, Pierre. Now, you know when sometimes you do something? We're going to be doing stuff right out of this bay. You've all seen fuel flow testers, pressure this, current ramp and that, insulin the pressure transducer. You look at it and you go, holy smoly, I don't know how to do that. You We're can show you how. That's it. We're going to show you how. You could go, hey, how did he do that? And then we'll tell Pierre, get your hands out of the way. You got to show the guy. But it's going to be really cool. <laughs> we'll be on with you for probably three, four hours doing that. We have also Richie Shorts with us. We're going to show you some stuff. People don't know how to do parasitic draw. He is great. Richie Shorts out of New Jersey, one of our TST board members. You know, people forget about the basic stuff, including... When we always look at and go, oh, my God, the guy got a high CCA rated battery to hire. What happens to the reserve capacity? And Richie can give you a whole great story on that and how it's going to cause even a drivability problem. So there's our TST big event, Saturday, March 27th, March 28th. And I would like to thank on behalf of TST, I'd like to thank our partner over here. Even though it's not Pete, Pete, I got to go, okay. Uh, I'm happy to be here, though. I'm, and I'm happy to have you out here. I'm glad Pete. I'm sure Pete's happy not to have traveled that far in the snow. His anniversary. He has warm weather. We got lousy weather. Yeah, happy anniversary, I'd rather be with him. Yeah, happy Pete anniversary, Chris. Pete. And, of course, Pierre. And it all made possible. I want to thank Chris for coming out and um, um, Gina. And, of course, Opus. This is brought to you by them. So, once again, from all of us here in New York, the snowy area for now, <laughs> be in good health and we'll see you soon. Thank you so much for your time.